First of all, I heard the album this morning. Great, great. Oh, thanks, man. That's, uh, that's great. It's a kind of back to the roots album, but maybe we can talk about that later. Thank I would you. like to know first, what have you done between those two albums? Because uh, no tour, no shows, no, well, some, some little things, but what have you done? Yeah, well, you know, we, 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 when we finished the, uh, the tour, just before 9-11, and, uh, and then, uh, you know, I went out to London after about, you know, we, sorry, we did some shows with the Stones. We did three shows with the yeah. Stones. And, uh, and then we did the Toronto show, the SARS Benefit. And then we did... Sorry. Uh, sorry? You have to stop something with the SARS. Oh. oh, this? Yes. Oh. You can put it... Yeah. Now worry, that, kid. <laughs> okay, we don't want that. Okay, we should. Okay. Now so, worries. Uh, Brian, what have you done between those two albums? Well, we, we did a few gigs after we finished with The Stones 3, and then we did The SARS Benefit in Toronto, and then we finished off at Hammersmith, which was a great gig. Um, and I remember we had a break, and then I went to London and I, uh, with Malcolm and Angus, and we met, and we spent about six weeks uh, uh, just, you know, uh, trying some things out. And, uh, and then uh, after about another month, I, I met them again somewhere else. I can't remember where the hell it was, no. It was that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we tried another month, some more, and... And the boy said, well, I tell you what, Brian, this, this is good. Uh, just give us some time to get some, some uh, riffs together. And uh, so I started motor racing, you know, for, for three, four years. I didn't start, but I had more time to do what I yeah. love to do, yeah. which is motor race. Uh, but in between that time as well, we left our last record company, which was a pain in the ass, you know, you know when it's like lawyers and everything. And... Um, and then there was Family Jewels, which we spent some time on putting together. And then Plug Me In, which we spent a little time. It, 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 was, it sort of took away from what we're doing. But the, the gist of the whole thing is Malcolm and Angus and Noah wanted to do something special. Um, they felt that maybe we were drifting a little from the whole idea of what ACDC was really about. And, I, I mean... I shouldn't say that too much, but it, it is the truth. I think they wanted to get back to that rock, that basic bluesy rock feel. Yep. And it's very difficult to write simple riffs. Um, I, and I hold up Get Back by the Beatles. I, I think every musician I spoke to after they heard that said, I could have written that, but they didn't. The Beatles <laughs> did, and they did it, and it was the simplest thing. And simple things are hard to write. They really are. Yeah. Um, simple and good things are hard to write. And, it, and I knew that the two boys together were very, uh, very concerned about getting it perfect this time. Because, do you know, as you get older and the band's been around a long time, the criticism is going to come at you thick and fast. Oh, it's the same stuff. Ah, it's, the, it's the same of the same. And, and we wanted to, to prove people wrong, I guess. We just to say, listen, you know we've still got something to offer that is exciting. And, of course, when I went to Vancouver and the boys said, Pierre, yeah, Brian, have a listen to this. Uh, I mean, the hairs on my arm stood on end. I went, gosh, that's so exciting. And I think when you hear the album, uh, it, uh, it sounds there's, like there's a freshness there. When I first heard the album, about a month after we'd recorded it, I sat in my car, stuck it on, terrified because I hadn't heard any of the songs because we moved so quickly in the studio. Oh, Brendan yeah. O'Brien, you know, move, move, get it. And I never heard anything and I went, oh, God, I don't know what this is well, going to be you're like. You're talking about the producer there. Yeah, yeah Brendan okay. O'Brien, the producer, yeah, I okay. do beg your pardon. Yeah. And uh, he was the most positive man I think I've met yeah. in my life. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I heard it in the car and I just went, boy, that sounds like it was spooky because it sounded like me 30 years ago. I thought I was listening to myself and it sounded fresh and the boys and the band sounded vibrant. And yes. I guess that gap served its purpose. It did something that just gave us a kick up the ass and okay. we felt great about doing it. But going back to the album... Uh, how long did you stay in the studio today? Uh, it was seven weeks. Seven weeks, which is 
short. Quite not very long. Yes, yeah, not very long. No. But I remember the first day, uh, uh, well, second day, uh, Brendan O'Brien came to me and he said, you don't like studios, do you, Brian? And I went, no, I don't. I hate them. And he said, what, 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 what don't you like about it? I said, if it's the buttons and... And, and, and when you sing, you have a piece of wood here and a piece of wood here, and somebody, there's a microphone there. And, and when somebody says, and headphones on, and somebody goes, OK, and now you must sing one, two, three. It's like putting a card in and clocking yeah. on to work. And I, <clears throat> I get bored. I'm not the best singer in the world, but what I am the best in the world at is this passion. Yeah. So passion with the ability that I do have mixed together can be direct, explosive, but it has to be real. And, and to capture that, it was difficult. So he said, give me, give me a night. So the next day, I came into the studio, and he said, we're going to sing here. And I went, but that's an office behind the reception desk. No. There was a little girl with a telephone, and yeah. people were coming in, the pizza delivery guy. <laughs> You know, all these people walking in and out, I said, and it was glass, so you yeah. could see. And he said, uh, I'll put some speakers up there. Here's a microphone, and here's a little desk, so I just sing. And I went, well, no. And he went, yeah, go on, just sing. And, I started, and that was it, and I started singing. The poor receptionist ran away and left her job. And uh, just kidding. <laughs> but she had a dog that used to howl. And I don't know if he was joining in or he was crying. Uh, something like that. But, <laughs> but to me, it felt wonderfully normal and happy, and I just felt like I was in the office with the guys, having a good time, and, uh, and, and, and but, I guess it came across. But the sound on, on the album is very rough, very natural, nearly yeah. no effect on drums. I didn't nothing. Hear, n nearly no. nothing. Guitars also, maybe, but no reverb and things like, no. like, like no. Uh, every band's used to do before. And you know what? To me, your voice is incredibly, well, well, you sing very well, yeah. but good, fresh, like it was well, yeah. maybe 25 or 30 years ago. Yeah. You, I, you know, I don't know if you share that part yeah. of you, well, but it, well, to it's me, different. when yeah. I hear some songs like uh, one of my favorite is uh, Money Made. Oh, wow. yeah, I love that song. What a song, what a, uh, well, you sing great. Well, all songs are great. Yeah. The album is okay, but this one particularly. I'm pleased you like that song. Yes. Because it's one of my favorites. Yes. And it's a strange one because... Uh, That's a beautiful you know, song. That work, work, money made. It yeah. almost sounds like it's a cross between soul and, oh, and yeah. rock and roll. And it was funny because I was about four days in and I was singing and Brendan O'Brien stopped us and he just said, you Brian Johnson? Because that's how he talks. He, he calls everybody by both names. Angus Young or Brian Johnson. <laughs> And he said, Brian Johnson, you are a soul singer. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm a rock and roll singer. He said, no, you're not. He said, you just tried to, you've just been trying to sing like Back in Black because you think everybody expects you to sing like Back in Black, and that's what you've been doing. You, my friend, are a soul singer. And I didn't know whether to take it as a compliment <laughs> or, not. or what, you know. And he said, just do what you're doing and enjoy yourself. And you know, the man was dead right because I didn't feel like I was trying to do something that was hard. It was just a natural, you know, and I was, I was looking forward to going into the studio and, you know, uh, and just, you know, the melodies, he just said, just make it up. Just make the melodies up. Sing the melodies. And, and you know, and some of my favorite singers were uh, Satchmo, you know, Louis Armstrong, Louis Prima. Uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> and, and, and those guys you can <clears throat> listen to forever. And uh, Frankie Miller, another great yeah, singer, yeah. Uh, 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 under, you know, singer that sh should have got a lot more recognition. I think, you know, I've hit the mic again, haven't I? <laughs> and, uh, and anyway, guys like that, Cocker, you know, and uh, Greg Billings, you know, from the Greg Billings band, another one of those guys that have got soft yeah. voices like mm -hmm. Velvet. I, it's never going to happen to me, but I mean that kind of singing where they just use the the voice like a, a blues thing, you know. And yes, but and the, for the, the first time, yeah, 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 there's some kind of bluesy things on yeah. there. Yeah, even 
steel guitar. Yeah, yeah right? that's a, a good an intro. Man, you, you can see the alligators when yeah, you hear that. Yeah, you know, yeah, you can yeah. see the alligators. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dim, dim, dim. It's, re it's real back to the essential <coughs> of the album. Yeah. Back, back to the roots. Well, I mean, it's very close from all the, the 1979, 